You may not believe it, but this right here was the first ever tortoise and one of the first ever animals to travel to the moon and back. Okay, so it wasn't this animal exactly, but it was his species. In September 1968, two Russian tortoises flew on the Soviet Zond 5 mission to the moon, circled it, and came back safely to Earth. They were among other life forms like mealworms and plants to be the first ever to go to the moon and come back. Pretty incredible stuff. In this video, we're gonna give you a little introduction to what is quite possibly the world's most popular tortoise species. Now, right off the bat, you should know, the Turtle Taxonomy Working Group does split the Russian tortoise into five subspecies. A lot of people disagree with it, and unlike Greek and Hermit's tortoises, which they are also in the same genus as, you can't just look at them and know what they are. It's something that has to be proven through genetics. So we won't get into that in this video, but we will give you a look into the life of the Russian tortoise. These amazing little tortoises have various common names, so they're not just referred to as the Russian tortoise, they're also called Horsefield's tortoise because they were named after the American naturalist Thomas Horsefield, and that's also where their scientific name comes from. They are now called Testudo Horsefieldii when they used to be in a genus called Agrionemi. So they actually were in Testudo first, they got moved to Agrionemis and then back to Testudo, and it's really no wonder why. We don't have to go into crazy specifics, but when you look at these animals, it is clear that they belong in the Testudo genus along with the Egyptian, Hermans, Greek, and marginated tortoises. Some other common names would be the Central Asian tortoise, the Steppe tortoise, and even the Afghan tortoise. So my point here is, even though these animals are mostly called the Russian tortoise, this is not a political video, this is not a political statement. We are simply referring to them because this is where they come from. They are native to Central Asia, and they also come from parts in Russia. So this animal throughout history has been dubbed the Russian tortoise. More out in other countries, people tend to call them Horsefield's tortoise, and of course those other names that are listed as their common names are used as well. Here in America, we usually refer to them as Russian tortoises, so that's what we're we're going to stick to in this video. Russian tortoises come from pretty harsh and arid habitat, but that's not to say that they don't have harsh winters as well. They can be found at elevations as high as five to seven thousand feet. And they occur in areas like Pakistan, Afghanistan, Iran, Southeastern Asia, and of course China. These tortoises go through some serious extremes in nature, boiling hot summers, frigid winters, and they can handle it. Because of this, they actually do very well in many portions of the United States. For example, right here in New Jersey, these tortoises have no problem getting through our excruciatingly hot summers and our sometimes frigid and even snowy winters. Here in South Jersey, these tortoises basically laugh at the winter here because it's nowhere near as harsh as it is in some of those elevations that they occur at in nature. The fluctuations in temperatures and conditions and the changes throughout the seasons that they get here in certain portions of our country and other countries allow them to experience an annual cycle that triggers them to breed well. Russian tortoises, even though they are still disgustingly imported in droves like you can't imagine, are finally starting to be produced pretty well under responsible captive conditions. Properly telling the gender of Russian tortoises is pretty easy once they're full grown because they are clearly sexually dimorphic. That means that just by looking at them, again, once they're adults, you could tell who's a boy and who's a girl. The larger animal here is the female. She's much bigger. They can get to be about the size of a dinner plate because she's gonna need to carry those eggs and they can lay anywhere between two and up to six eggs in a single clutch. And they're a good size. And I'm gonna show you some babies. You'll be surprised how big they are right out of the egg. When you look at the bottom of the female, you can see she's got a small tail. See that? Just a small tail with a puckered vent right there. And then when you look at the much smaller male that in some cases is literally half the size of the female, he has a much longer tail that he's gonna almost always carry to the side. And typically, male Russian tortoises are gonna develop a much wider, stockier looking head. Now, unlike many other tortoise species, male Russian tortoises typically do not get a concave plastron as we see in most male turtles and tortoises. So you can see this is a fully grown, mature male and his plastron is just as flat and level as the female is. 
Because these animals are imported in droves, they tend to come in all and around the same size of about four to four and a half inches, and you will see dealers selling them as adults. Be warned, that is not an adult. Maybe for the male it is, but for the female, you are looking at at least this. So these tortoises do get bigger. So I'm gonna show you what goes into actually properly housing them, especially outdoors. Now, while they may not be the biggest tortoise species, they absolutely require space. Personally, I would recommend housing a trio in at least a 10 by 20 pen, and you're gonna to wanna to give them areas in that pen where they can exhibit the behaviors they were born to do, like browsing and grazing, climbing, basking, and of course, digging. So here at Garden State Tortoise, if you guys are a regular subscriber, you've seen our outdoor tortoise pens many times. There's really not much different about our Russian tortoise pens in the sense that they get low-lying vegetation, big beautiful fountain grasses, other species of plant like spirea, sedums, uh, knockout rose and hibiscus to name a few. They get rocky sandy substrate because it has to be able to drain well, especially for when we get rain. It's always good to give them an uneven terrain so that they can go up and they can come back down because otherwise they're just sitting on flat ground and becoming bored. Proper placement of the pen is crucial. They need to be in direct sunlight because like other testudo species, Russian tortoises are sun worshipers. One thing that will help them, just like we've shown you in some of the other videos, are cold frames or greenhouses like this one right here. This is an eight foot by two foot cedar frame, cold frame made by Gardner Supply that you can find on Amazon or just by Googling Gardner Supply, cold frames and greenhouses. The cedar frame does not harm the animals. Cedar bedding is what will harm the animals. This stuff is great because it'll basically last forever, if not close to it, because it won't rot out. I put it up on a base, and then I make it so that there's an entrance and the animals can come and go as they please. This way, they can thermoregulate on less than favorable days and get warmer quicker in the mornings when they really need to to get going with that annual cycle. And you'll see that they waste no time going back to it in the fall. Some of the tortoises are already coming in here because they're gonna naturally hibernate outdoors here in South Jersey without a problem. Take a look. So check it out, right here is a female that has basically had it with the season. She's been like this a couple days and you can see just the top of her is sticking out a little bit above the substrate because she's starting to descend underground. She's chosen inside this greenhouse and there's actually a couple other girls that are already in here too. And the rest of the group, as the temperatures fall throughout October, will continue making their way back into this cold frame. And once I know everybody's in here, and I will help a couple if I have to, if they're picking other areas, I will then barricade them to this so that they are good to go and fully protected for the winter from any kind of extreme elements that could cause an issue, uh, and of course, predation. Predator protection is something we take seriously year round, so it doesn't matter the season. Our animals are protected all the time by high powered electric fences, three different camera systems, motion sensors, humane traps, and of course, our dogs. So, this girl here is starting to get comfortable. She has chosen her spot for the season, but this one back here is not. What I really wanna show you is the consistency of the soil here. This is the natural ground here on the coast in South Jersey. See how it's got a good amount of sand to it? This is wonderful for just about every single tortoise you can think of when you wanna keep them outside. So this stuff is very well drained. It's easy for the animals to dig into. And of course, it's also easy for them to nest in it when nesting season comes. So I don't wanna disturb her too much, but I want you to see that this is in fact a female Russian tortoise right here. Just clean off her shell a little bit. You can see that beauty right there. So she's moving around. She's gonna continue twisting and turning and descending, and she'll use those really powerful claws to get down deep, which brings me to probably the biggest issue with keeping Russian tortoises, especially outdoors. They burrow, and man, let me tell you, they go deep. All right, so check this out. I kind of made this happen on purpose to try to drive a point home in this video. And that is the fact that the walls to your outdoor pen must be deeper than this. This is not suitable, okay? This pen, I knew these walls were not deep enough, so I purposely put a Russian in here to see what she would do, and look at this. She has started burrowing right here, because it's getting cool out, and you see that? That's the end of the fence right there. This tortoise is going to effortlessly, effortless, effortless, <laughs> effortlessly, what is up with me? This tortoise will effortlessly dig out of this pen tonight if I don't move her. This is not our Russian tortoise pen. But you see how fast it can happen? Now, in my experience, Russian tortoises are capable of digging at least two to two and a half feet deep. So, let's say you're 
Walls are not into the ground deep enough, and yeah, technically you should go like 18 inches for this species. When they go down to hibernate, they might come up on the other side of the fence. And what if you're at work? What if you're on vacation when that happens? Chances are you're never gonna see that tortoise again. And you could also be promoting an invasive species because these tortoises are capable of surviving in a lot of areas. In fact, three of the Russian tortoises that we now house here at Garden State Tortoise were brought to us by animal control because they were found wandering around in different parts of the great state of New Jersey. So you can't stay here, girl. Now, if you don't want to dig the walls of your fence for your tortoise pen all the way into the ground, you could build them on top of the ground and then backfill with a certain depth of soil, as long as you're making sure that the animals will not freeze solid if you're in a really cold region, and of course, making sure everything is properly drained. You see how quick she did that? I literally just put her in here while we started filming this video and she almost got out already. And there are several other holes that she made that quickly. Let's put her back where she belongs. Okay, let's talk Russian tortoise babies. Look at the size of these things already. They're just over a month old and they're pretty big. I mean, they're pushing like two inches. Russian tortoise eggs are a pretty decent size and when you see them come out of the female, it's actually kind of alarming because you think she must be in pain. But they are, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people agree, the brawniest, the most ready for life out of the testudo species and really out of a lot of tortoises. They kind of remind me of desert and ornate box turtles where they're just way more impressive when they first come out of the egg. They're really not frail looking. And here's a really cool comparison for you. Okay, so these are Russian tortoises. I've already talked about how big they get. You're looking at dinner plate size, maybe up to about eight inches for a female, sometimes only as little as four inches for a male. So they are not the largest member of the testudo family. The marginated tortoise is. These guys and girls can grow to be 14 inches. So this is the largest of the testudo family. This is an almost three month old baby marginated tortoise next to a Russian tortoise that is just over one month old. So look at that. See what I mean? These things are tanks right out of the egg. Even their heads are huge. Super cool. And one of the other things you're gonna notice about them is the differences in color. So let's move this little marginated out. See in a bit, little guy. And I wanna show you the variation in color already. So you've got this one that's almost like a nice cream and brown color split right down the middle. This one's got more of a vibrant yellow. And this one is like a gray brown. It's much darker than its siblings here. These three are related, mind you. They are all siblings of each other. So. This helps set the stage for that variation in color that continues throughout life. So now let's take a look at some of the adults. Okay, so here's your examples of adult variation. Variation in color, size, and shape within the testudo species genus is something that they are just beyond famous for. They're always throwing people for a loop, and it's one of the reasons why they are so hard to differentiate. But what's interesting here is you have four Russian tortoises, all adults. The three largest ones are females. The small one is male. But look at the variation here. The male, almost completely dark, and some are nearly jet black. This female is almost completely gold. She's absolutely gorgeous. This female has more of a mottled or marbled appearance, a little bit of orange hue in there. And this is kind of your more typical looking animal. But what's really interesting about her, if you look at this part of her scoot here, okay? When she came in as an import, because she was taken out of the wild and imported many years ago, this was her primary color. She was basically a brown with black margins. And then as she grew in captivity in a very clean environment, she turned this lighter color. So that's kind of a common thing with tortoises in captivity. A lot of leopard tortoises, for example, they'll be bone white because they're growing up under artificial lighting and in very clean situations. Some animals are just morphs and of course they're that colorful, but for the most part, tortoises and even turtles that are raised indoors under captive conditions are going to look a lot cleaner and sometimes more vibrant, but they can also be washed out. So it goes both ways. These animals do live their lives outdoors now, but it's easy to see just how different they are and there also are differences in shape. Now, what do Russian tortoises get confused with besides other members of the testudo genus? Well, I happen to have one species right here that is remarkably close in appearance, but comes from a completely different place and has completely different habitat preferences and even a different diet. 
Okay, so let's acknowledge the elephant in the room, which is this animal in the middle right here. This is Forsten's tortoise, Indotestudo forstenii. It is not a member of the genus Testudo, and even though it looks remarkably similar to this Russian tortoise in particular right here, it is in fact a very, very different animal. Forsten's tortoise comes from the humid forests in Indonesia, and it is a very endangered species of tortoise that lives a totally different life. This animal actually will eat animal matter, whereas Russian tortoises, maybe if they come across roadkill, or they will even eat like an invertebrate, like a snail for the most part, they are strict vegetarians feeding on weeds and flowers and shoots and stuff like that. But it's really amazing how these two animals that are from completely different areas look that similar. So, there you go, that's the Forsten's tortoise. Oh, and one last thing to show you. One of the things that the Russian tortoise is very well known for, which also the Hermit's tortoise is known for, is that hardened tip on the end of the tail that both genders have. Well, so does the Forsten's tortoise. It's right here. So that's another thing that could throw you for a loop when it comes to differentiating these two actually very different tortoise species. Russian tortoises are without a doubt one of, if not the most popular tortoise species out there, especially in the United States. Other tortoises like Selkatas, Yellowfoots, and Redfoots, those have really made it to the mainstream as well. And in fact, you do see quite a few of them in rescues across our country. But Russians, at least for us, are definitely the most common tortoise that comes our way. And every single one of them in our collection here happen to be rescues. So one thing you may have noticed throughout this video is the condition of some of them. Some of these animals just got here and we haven't had a chance to do too much with them yet, but they will be looked at by veterinarians. But for example, this girl right here, even though she's very healthy and full of personality, look at how overgrown her beak is. That's from being fed an improper diet and not having access to things like cuddle bone, which is a calcium, where they can naturally file down their beaks. Lucky for them, that is strictly cosmetic and it can be filed by a trained professional, but if you weren't to do anything about it, the beak would eventually grow all the way down, the animal would not be able to open its mouth fully and it would starve to death. Because Russian tortoises have such huge, powerful claws, which is how they are able to dig so deep and so fast and efficiently, they also will get too long when they are not kept properly and they will curl under and over into the sides and the animal will not be able to walk properly. So. If you do keep your Russian tortoises inside, from the start, it's imperative that you give them a deep enough substrate because they should be allowed to exhibit those naturalistic behaviors like digging, and that will help keep their nails at a safe length. You'll also notice with this female here that the back part of her carapace and marginal scutes are upturned. This could be that she was fed too high protein in her diet. Hard to say, otherwise she does appear to be very healthy, but the problem is internally she could be suffering from something like fatty liver, so we'd have to have that checked out. When it comes to this tortoise, you'll see that she has a very crooked beak, starting to get a little overgrown. She's got a bit of an underbite, but right now she is able to eat perfectly fine. Both tortoises are in great weights, but again, these animals are imported in droves, they are sold for very low costs, and people sometimes don't do enough research. They may love them dearly, but they're not giving them the proper lifestyle. So the animals end up becoming deformed, and sometimes they meet a fate way too early. But for these girls, I think they're gonna be around for a long time. They're on a good diet now, they are outside, and they are doing very well. The Russian tortoise is a hardy, beautiful, personable animal that makes a wonderful pet if you absolutely can provide it with everything it needs. So do your research. I hope this video helps a little bit, but we also have a website called hermanihaven.com where you can get some more information on the Testudo genus in general. Russian tortoises continue to amaze everybody across the world with their antics, their charisma, and of course their beauty. They are absolutely stunning tortoises, worthy of protection, because right now they are considered vulnerable in nature by the IUCN, so that means their populations are declining, and it's no wonder with how often they are imported and the numbers that they are imported in. Hey guys, I wanna remind you, we are going to be starting up our Patreon next month, so stay tuned for news on that, so you can help be a part of continuing the future of Garden State Tortoise and helping animals like these two girls right here.